America, uh, still drinking coffee. Uh, had plenty of it today, and I've been telling you guys that I'm going to keep these videos shorter, so this might help me. Uh, let's see if we can keep it within 10 minutes. Uh, got a script this time, <laughs> hot off the presses. And the results are in. First month in the books. First of all, stoked about that, that I went four straight plus, so 31 this is 31st, 32nd day. God. I, I, if I'm on camera, I can't do math. I swear. Anyway, this is the 31st or 32nd day in a row where um, it's just been completely locked down. Do your job. And by job, I mean get to the gym, eat your food, prep your food, do your shopping, do your work, repeat, rinse, recycle. Um, I'm sure the order of that was all messed up, but, uh, that's, that's the way it's been for a month. So that's like proof positive that you could adapt your lifestyle to do it this way. Um, and some pretty awesome results. Um, I must say, uh, and I know I made a post on Facebook where the numbers were a little bit, um, more improved. I wasn't like lying to you or anything. Those were real numbers, but those are from one specific data point to another, as in first day to last day, um, these uh, uh, figures that I'm about to present to you are averages. So it will be less drastic, but it shows a more pertinent trend over time. And I will say, um, switching to measuring averages instead of a one data point to another um, comparison um, has paid huge dividends in actually seeing correct trends over time instead of um, um, maybe getting a little too far ahead of myself in terms of jumping to conclusions based on, you know, one day where maybe I didn't sleep that great and didn't eat as much as I should have versus another day where I overate a little bit. Um, so like, you know, those are, those are just examples, but um, instead of going from one strict data point to the other, I took the averages and I am happy to say there's no neon involved with uh, these graphics that I'm about to put up, so uh, your eyes will thank me. Uh, first one is body comp, so here's what that looks like. Um, as you'll see at the top, uh, that figure 189.1 .1 was a three-day average, which was kind of like the lead-in period. Uh, it wasn't a full week, but uh, down from 181, or one, again, math, 189.1 .1, all the way down to uh, 181.4 on the scale. And scale weight isn't the end-all be-all, but that's, that's great. That's eight and a third pounds down. Uh, and as you move right, or whichever stage right, whatever you want to call it <laughs> on the graph, um, you'll see that the change rate, the delta there, is um, that averages out to 1% of weight loss Per week for the four weeks there were weeks where like week one where that was nearly doubled which was not good um, but the then again the stats were a little bit muddied by um, uh, muscle memory uh, coming off a extended period away from the gym um, so that could really throw things off uh, water weight loss I was coming off Thanksgiving overeating you know you're not just gonna have fat to lose you're gonna have a lot of water stored water with all that extra food. Um, and so yeah, that could be the explanations for why the changes in the first couple of weeks were a little bit more drastic. Uh, and then as we keep going to the far side of this chart here, um, down nearly 11 pounds of fat on average. Again, in that Facebook post, I said it was like 12.3. And that's true if you take first day to current day uh, numbers. But on average, it's nearly 11 pounds. And lean body mass is up three pounds. Uh, this is great. And also, my waist is down on average two inches. Great. Awesome. Well and good. Um, but uh, subjectively, don't really feel that great. And you could find, well, not that I don't feel great. I'm operable and I'm still being productive. Um, but it's uh, kind of a warning sign. Um, that this might be a little bit too drastic of a deficit. So you run the numbers backwards uh, to check on your metabolism. There's an energy balance calculator that I've been given by uh, Menno Henselman. Shout out to him. Um, that if you run 
the averages back through that, you could actually find your maintenance um, or basically the number that depicts your metabolism. If you keep track of the right stuff, you can read your metabolism like a book. You have numbers where you could literally be like, oh, if I ate this many calories or wherever the calories are, I would have lost this much weight and that holds up based on that calculator. This is real. This is, it's not some theory and I'm showing you living proof of this. Um, and this is what's so freaking cool. I'm getting like amped up and it's not just the coffee. This is what's so freaking cool. If you keep the right details, this is like major key alert here. Keep data every day as diligently as possible. If you actually want to commit to changing your physique, you have to keep data. You have to know what's going in your body, how much exercise your body is doing, how much sleep you're getting, a number of things. You have to control all these variables. And then over time, you have these pretty little tables where you can just be like, oh, cool. Well, if I just add 500 calories, I'm straight. Um, and of course, projections are just projections. They aren't definitive, but you can, if you have two, three, four, five weeks of data, you could find your averages. You can, and, and you could say with relative certainty that if I increase calories by X amount, that's either going to slow down my weight loss or increase my weight gain or X, Y, and Z. And you have the numbers to back that up. And then you could look back at your data set and every week you can make a tweak like oh okay I added too many calories back and now my metabolism is this but on average that doesn't mean that it's going to stay there the rest of the time it adapts I'm getting off on a tangent I'm just saying if you keep the right data and you calculate the averages and you know what you're doing which I do and I want to help you because I do and if you just give me numbers I will gladly calculate all of this shit for you um, if you know it, you can adapt. And that's the hallmark of any kind of making progress ever. If you come up on a hurdle, you adapt, you problem solve. So, uh, let me put this up here real quick for metabolism or, uh, diet, um, information. Um, you see that week five projection, that's what I'm going to be shooting for. And that's an additional 546 calories a day. Um, I'm upping training volume as well, and I this sounds like a couple of vlogs ago where I'm like, oh, I could afford to up calories, um, and then I freaked out after I saw some of the results because, again, I wasn't using averages. I was using specific data points, and as good as this little device here, the Sculpt Chisel, which I would recommend for anyone who I'd be coaching or just anyone who cares about tracking their body composition, you can't just take one measurement. You have to take three, five, seven, get your average, Take those every day, get that average, and then you find the trend. And this is not to say, this is not like a handheld DEXA scanner. It's not like you could be like, oh, I'm 50% body fat, and then tomorrow it'll tell me exactly. No. So you got to find your averages. And when I started doing that, I noticed that that change that I made, you'll see on this chart in week, um, what is it? Week three, where I only lost about a half a pound, and I freaked out. All right, I moved dropped the frames there, but uh, sorry for the jump cut. Uh, I was saying uh, I should have uh, should have lost more weight. Um, you look to the right and you see on that chart that I actually gained a pound more than of muscle that week while still losing body fat. And that is exactly what I need to be doing. And that goes to show that a lower rate of weight loss is going to be more beneficial because you are losing comparatively more body fat than lean mass. What I said was uh, earlier, I was hinting towards that 60% energy balance is, is too drastic. Um, there's this concept called genetic potential, which I'm probably going to write about in the future. Um, I don't want to get off on another tangent because I'm already coming up against 10 minutes. Um, but um, so there's distinctions of, uh, of training status where you're either like untrained, you've never been in the gym in your life, beginner, intermediate, advanced, and then like elite. Um, and there's a really good um, calculator for this. If you, if you take your frame size, like your ankle measurements, your wrist, or why did I just, this is not your ankle, this is your wrist. So I can't do math or speak on camera. Um, 
Broadcast journalism major. Loyola. Whatever. Um, wrist measurements, ankle measurements, and this only really works for males because um, there's actually a genetic potential calculator for um, uh, natural trainees, and uh, it was constructed by Casey Butt. Uh, get your laugh out of the way. Um, it's great material, and it will estimate at whatever given body fat percentage you are currently at, um, based on your frame size, it will spit out a number that indicates uh, what your maximum potential muscular weight will be or your genetic ceiling. So at my current body fat percentage around 18%, I think my genetic potential at 18% body fat is like 216 pounds. Okay, that's not where I'm at right now. I'm like 181.4. So I'm about 15% away from that ceiling. And um, so that would lend to me being more of an intermediate. Even though I've been training for a damn near a decade, um, that doesn't really mean I was on an optimized program or anything, anything close to what I'm doing right now. So I'm more towards an intermediate and as an intermediate you could afford to kind of be in that middle ground between you don't want to lose all that lean mass that you probably have as an advanced athlete or you just want to lose fat as fast as possible as a beginner. I'm in the middle somewhere where I want to actually gain lean mass while losing body fat and I could do this and it was shown that I could do this in week three by reducing that deficit. Um, again, I just freaked out prematurely so um this is why when you look back and you know this shit you could change and you could be better um so coming up uh this following week i'm projected to uh have about 110 grams of fat um 210 grams of carbs roughly 50 grams of fiber and 150 grams of protein a day uh and these will be higher on training days uh like today which is going to be gnarly because I am very excited to be eating more food, especially after being at a Christmas party yesterday where I just sat next to like three tables of dessert and looked at them longingly. Um, but now there, uh, that's that's the cost benefit. I, I didn't I didn't eat. It. I brought my own food and got my macros in, and and now we're here. Um, uh, I'm not <laughs> I'm not telling YouTube and the world that. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I binged or something. No, it's it's not worth it. So, um, when you're, I'll be adding back calories systematically because another thing that I also found. Let me blow through this here. That the calculator I was using to determine my maintenance has been systemically low. Um, so my actual maintenance after I run the numbers, it has been averaging right around uh, 25,000 calories uh, per week, and my calculator is telling me closer to um, 22,000. And then you take 80% of that. And so I'm roughly a couple thousand calories per week short if I just base it off my calculator. That's why you can't just make estimates. You have to have the data that you observe in real life to compare the two and find a middle ground. But I won't just be jumping my calories all the way. Like if I wanted to add all those calories back, um, I could actually probably afford to eat not just 550 extra calories per day, probably like 750 or 800, but I don't want to push it that high just yet because like I said a couple weeks ago when I did push it a little higher, that basically almost slowed my weight loss down completely. I still recomp a little bit, but um, I do want to continue to lose fat at an optimal rate, so I'm not going to throw them all back in all at once. If I see good returns this week on the, the, the small additional amount of, not small, on um, this additional amount of calories, I'll either um, continue to bump it or stay where I'm at accordingly, based on the numbers. Uh, so yeah, there's my, that's my spiel about uh, <laughs> keeping details, keeping numbers, um, running averages, running calculators. You got to be meticulous about this. This is not, this is not easy. Like if this was easy, everyone would do it. Everyone would be able to lose 10 pounds of fat in a month. How many people do you know who do, who do this? I'm, 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 that didn't sound right at all. Who do this? <laughs> How many people, and I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal here, but you have to know, like knowledge, half the battle. Consistent application, other half. People are like 
not even close to where they need to be on either half, but then just expect to have results. That's not how it's going to work. So, again, I'd be happy to work through all of this with you. This is what coaching is all about. And right now, these results are kind of like my marketing right now. Like, this is real life. This is happening. Um, so, if you want something similar to happen to you, holler at me. Definitely have coaching spots open. Um, and I wanted to, uh, to do like a tiered system type deal where maybe I could check on, in on you uh, once a month or twice a month instead of one time every week. But the more I think about that, the more um, important I, I realize that um, the weekly changes really are. And without that, if, like, if I just went based on my first week numbers for the whole month, I would be in a whole heap of trouble because um, that is not anywhere near enough food. Um, and uh, yeah, I eating that, that would be even a more drastic deficit. Um, I would just be like shooting in the dark here. So weekly updates, major key. Um, so I want to offer that to you. Um, and, um, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what we're going to be. Uh, that would be the a big part of the relationship. If you were a client of mine. Um, just seeing how you you change over the weeks, uh, looking back and and changing forward. Anyway, the last thing I got I'm going to touch on is training. Uh, I'm way over ten minutes. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so a couple of things popped up this week. Um, I noticed a trend, and I don't have uh, a graph for this, so your eyes are fine. Um, that in the exercise ordering, since I'm hitting a muscle two out of every three days of the week. If I order the exercises as I'm doing a compound lift first day and then an isolation lift the next day, so say squats on day one, leg extensions on day two, the isolation lift is suffering based on the amount of muscle damage that I'm accumulating from squats. On other instances where I'm reversing that order, say I'll do like um, isolation work for, uh, what does this hold true for? isolation work for um, my chest on one day and follow that up the next day with uh, a heavier compound like a bench press, those exercises both trended in the correct direction instead of stagnating like some of the opposite um, ordering did. Uh, so this leads me to believe that isolation exercise exercises the day before a compound is more like active recovery. So I've basically... Um, shuffled around my exercise ordering to accommodate for this. Um, I've added sets to certain exercises based on work capacity for these sets. Uh, and what that means is if I'm able to maintain at least 75% or more of the reps from that first set across all sets, then I'll just add a set for the next week. Um, for instance, I did this with squats. On squats, uh, my target is five sets of eight reps, uh, which is my, my first set target. And I was able, it went like eight, eight, seven, seven, six. And so I was able to maintain 75% on, from that uh, last set, which was six reps, is at least 75%. It is 75% of eight. So this next week, um, that means my quads could probably handle a little bit more volume. Uh, work capacity tends to correlate with the amount of volume you can handle. So added sets there. And then I'm also realizing that I um, have a little bit of tennis elbow. Uh, which is not fun. It's making um, flying movements for my chest and curls a pain in the ass. So uh, I altered this the fly that I'll be doing to kind of accommodate my elbow a little bit better. Um, and the curls that I'll be doing are going to be using blood flow restriction, um, which is a topic for another day. But that's kind of if you ever see anybody in the gym with like blood pressure cuffs, um, yeah, you're occluding the blood flow there and that's going to accumulate muscle damage at a much lower intensity. So it's going to give my elbow a break. Um, so I can keep hitting it with the right amount of volume and, and give, like I said, that the, the tendons, uh, a bit of a rest. So to allow that to heal. Uh, so that's all for training. Uh, that's going very well. I'm still gaining strength across the board pretty much in all lifts. Um, so again, that's another thing that shows me, um, cause in the research, um, the lower bounds of an effective diet for like an inter intermediate athlete like myself is roughly, uh, like I said, 60% energy balance. That's where I'm at right now. And I am still managing to gain 
strength while losing body fat and gaining muscle at the same time, aka recomping. Uh, I would wager to guess if I dropped any further from this, that would not be the case. Uh, to prevent this from happening and also kind of improve my day-long energy and hunger signals, um, we're working towards more of an 80% energy balance instead of 60. So I'm still in a deficit. I'll probably gain a little bit more muscle mass, which is great. Um, still lose fat mass and hopefully strength will either stay good where it's at right now or continue. Uh, so yeah, uh, last thing, newsletter coming out today. I have a great article on cardio. So either if you love cardio, um, or hate cardio because it's such a black and white issue. <laughs> uh, if you ask 100 people, you'll either get 50 high fives or 50 punches in the face. Um, uh, so yeah, give that a read. That's in the newsletter. Sign up. It's free. If you sign up for the newsletter, you'll also get a free PDF. So check it out. Taylor-MadeFitness.com. I'm just trying to add value to your life, guys. Um, and, and coaching, like I said, open. Uh, I'm welcoming you with open arms here. Um, let's talk. If you want to get better, if you have the, the will to improve, we got this. We can do this. Um, but all right. Uh, until next week, uh, I plan on having some more pretty tables for you. Um, and I, I think I'm, I'm just going to forfeit the idea of having a shorter video. Um, <laughs> uh, so these are going to be roughly 20 minutes each week, but whatever. If it works, it works. Um, yeah, thanks for being along for the ride, and see you next week.